Beautifully tender, lightly crispy strips of venison backstrap steak. Sweet and savory Asian sauce with ginger and garlic. Scallions, red bell peppers, all coming together to make my version of the popular Chinese American dish known as Mongolian beef, or more accurately in this case, Mongolian venison. Now when I set out to originally make this recipe using beef, I was trying to recreate more or less the P.F. Chang's Mongolian beef. I absolutely love it, it's super delicious, the texture and the consistency and the light crispiness of the beef with that great sauce, all the green onions, I love everything about it. But I also really enjoy the dish called Beijing beef at Panda Express. It's a little bit different. I think it might even be a little spicier. I definitely like the bit of red bell pepper that they incorporate into that dish. So if I had to describe what we're making today, I would describe it more like the P.F. Chang's Mongolian beef, but with a little bit of influence from that Beijing beef by way of the red bell peppers, a couple other little things. This is an absolutely mouthwatering dish, and I know it often seems daunting to make Chinese takeout or Chinese restaurant style recipes at home because there's some maybe technique or even equipment that your average cook in the US might not have or be familiar with. But we're gonna break this down in pretty simple terms. It's something that really anybody can make, and there's nothing especially weird about the ingredients you need. The most exotic ingredient we're using is fresh ginger, and I think you can get that at almost any grocery store. So let's get right into it and take a look at the cuts of meat we're gonna be using for this amazing Mongolian venison. Here we have a couple of small venison backstrap steaks that we're going to use for this. Each of these steaks are just about half a pound, so that works perfectly for this batch of Mongolian venison we're making. Now, I need to slice these into very thin strips, but before I do, I'm going to put them in the freezer for just a little while, about 40 minutes or so. I want them to just start hardening up because that's going to make it much easier to slice quite thinly. So I'll just stick this whole cutting board uncovered into the freezer and we'll pick it up in a little bit. Okay, venison is partially frozen and firmed up a good bit, so now I'll just use a sharp knife and start slicing. I'll go at about a 45 degree angle to make for some prettier looking slices of meat. And note that I am slicing against the grain. This is an important detail that makes for a more tender piece of meat that's much easier to bite and chew. And since I'm going to serve this Mongolian venison atop a bed of white rice, I'll get that going at this point. Because the rice is going to take a while to cook, so I might as well let it cook while I'm doing the rest of this. I'll make a big batch of rice so I can have some leftovers. So I'll start with two cups of dry white rice and add in three cups of water, bring that up to a boil, and then reduce the heat to as low as possible and put a lid on the pan. Now I just have to leave it alone for 20 minutes, and by the time I'm ready for it, it'll be perfectly fluffy and tasty rice. Now to finish preparing the venison. There's a technique used in most American Chinese restaurants to turn inexpensive, tougher cuts of meat into tender little pieces that are perfect for stir-fry type dishes. This technique is called velveting, and there are a couple different ways to do it. But simply put, it involves combining a little baking soda with some water and then soaking the meat in it for a short while. And it doesn't take very long for these thin strips of meat, only about 15 minutes. Even for venison backstrap, which tends to be a relatively tender piece of meat anyway, it really does help and the end result is definitely worth doing it. In the meantime, I'll do a little more prep work. Scallions play a big role in this recipe, so I'm definitely using those. These are some pretty thin and small scallions, so I'm going to use five of them. If they were larger, I'd use four. First, I'm going to separate the softer, darker green ends away from the harder white ends. Then I'll cut those darker green ends into pieces that are somewhere around a couple inches long. These will be going in right near the end. As for the harder white ends, I'm going to slice those up and then chop them into pretty small bits. These will be getting sauteed as we begin making the sauce. And of course we need some garlic, so I'll finally mince up four to five cloves. Next, we need some fresh grated ginger. So I'll cut just a little segment off this large ginger root and then use my zester grater thingy to finely grate it. I'm going for one tablespoon of this grated ginger. Lastly, I'll chop up a red bell pepper such that I end up with little rectangles like this. 
Now that that venison has been velveted, I'll give it all a quick rinse in a colander and then spread it all out over some paper towels and pat it pretty dry. And the next step is to season, so I'll sprinkle that meat with some kosher salt and some black pepper. Now this next step could be considered optional, but I do recommend it. I'm going to dust all those venison strips with just a small amount of cornstarch. I'm not trying to absolutely cake it on there or create a thick breading, just the lightest little coating. This is going to give us a better fry and also make the outside just the slightest bit crispy, which is definitely a good thing in my opinion. Finally, we're ready to start cooking, and the first step is to fry that meat. I'll get some vegetable oil heated up in my deep cast iron skillet. I'm putting in just enough oil that the bits of meat will be fully covered, but I don't need to go any crazier than that. I'll let that oil heat up to about 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and then just carefully start setting in the venison. I'll mention that I'm doing this in three small batches because I don't want to overcrowd that pan. The meat strips will cook way better when they have some room, and I don't cause the oil temperature to go down nearly as much as if I had just dumped all the meat in there at once. But each batch only takes a minute or two. Those thin strips fry very quickly, and it really is only about 60 seconds from the time I finish putting the meat in to the time I start taking it back out. I'll scoop that meat out of there and set it on a wire rack to let it drip while I go ahead and fry the second and third batches of venison. Now to get the liquid part of our sauce mixed up, so everything is ready when we need it. First, I'll start with three quarters of a cup of water. Next is six tablespoons of soy sauce, though I do like to go half soy sauce and half soy paste, just thickens it up a little more. If you only have soy sauce, you can absolutely just use that. Next, a tablespoon of rice wine vinegar and two thirds of a cup of brown sugar. Get that all nicely whisked together. And now we're moving back over to the stove. I'm going to get my wok heated up with some olive oil over medium high heat. Since I have this wok, I'm obviously going to use it, but you can certainly just use a large skillet for this if you don't have one. When the oil is good and hot, I'll put in the bell pepper pieces, give them a pinch of kosher salt, and then let them cook away for a couple minutes until they start to get a little bit tender. At that time, I'll throw in those chopped up white parts of the scallions, along with the garlic, ginger, and one teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Give that all a stir and let it saute for just a minute. It wouldn't take very long before things start to burn, so don't take your eye off of it during this part. Then I'll pour in my soy, water, and brown sugar mixture. Whisk it all together, and then reduce my heat to medium low. At this point, I'm just going to let everything cook at a medium simmer for about five minutes, stirring pretty regularly. And the sauce is still pretty loose at this point, and while I didn't have my camera recording for some reason, I added a simple slurry to thicken it up just a little bit. Just mix three teaspoons of cornstarch with three teaspoons of water and stir that into the sauce. I wouldn't go any more than this or it will thicken way too much. Alternatively, you could just let the sauce simmer a while longer and reduce a bit more. Now I just have to add all that fried venison into the sauce and also those larger pieces of green onion. Coat it all nicely and just cook for about three more minutes to get everything nice and hot. And that's it, time to serve. I'll start by laying down a nice bed of that cooked white rice, a healthy portion of the Mongolian venison over top, and finish it with just a light sprinkle of sesame seeds. And now I'm ready to dig in and give it a taste. Mm. That tastes exactly how I hoped it would and how I wanted it to. That venison is so tender with just the slightest bit of crisp on the outside from that cornstarch. That sweet and tangy sauce is so comparable to the P.F. Chang's Mongolian beef sauce. You get that bit of soy, that little ginger coming through, just the tiniest amount of heat from the red pepper flake, which is perfect for me because pretty much a lightweight when it comes to spice, but I like a little. The green onion, you gotta have that in there, and the red bell pepper really did add a nice touch. This would have gone great with noodles, and I thought about making some homemade noodles to go with this whole thing, but really, the Mongolian venison was the star of the show, so I just went with the basic white rice for the sake of presentation. But if you enjoy the P.F. Chang's Mongolian beef or the Panda Express Beijing beef, you are absolutely gonna love this recipe because I think it brings the best of both of those together 
And it's not really a hard recipe to make. There are just a few steps and you know, you gotta get the technique just about right, but there's not a whole lot that went into this. I velveted that meat, super simple. Dusted it with some of that cornstarch. Couldn't be easier. Chop up a couple vegetables, grate some ginger, fry up the meat, make the sauce, mix it all together. Delicious. And as I always say, if you don't have any venison or don't want to use venison, just use beef. You don't have to use a nice steak. In fact, you generally wouldn't for Chinese stir fry beef anyway. Just get something like a flank steak or similar, cut it into those thin strips, velvet it for just a few minutes. It's going to come out amazing. And as always, I'll put a link to the full recipe in the video description below. If you want to take a look at it, make it yourself. And be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all my latest stuff, including future cooking and a couple more venison videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.